Andy, it's a pleasure to welcome you. Thanks, Martin. We have known for many years, um, you have always been a professional and you went to the entrepreneurship route. So, took the plunge and took your company, you know, to the next level and then I think you were sold to uh, Mintra a few years back. Yes. And now you're back to the second venture. So, I want to draw some nuggets out of you in terms of entrepreneurship lessons. Since this is your second time around, I'm sure there are some lessons you can share with, you know, young entrepreneurs. Um, they always tell me that fundamentals don't change. Economies might change, but the fundamentals of entrepreneurship don't change. So I wanted to ask you between the first and the second, what are the fundamentals that don't change? And then we can talk about what are the things that have changed. Yeah, first, thanks for the opportunity to talk about my experience. Okay. And it's always a pleasure to share um, the journey. You know, what things have, like I, I, I mentioned many times to people who ask about, you know, repeat entrepreneurship, I say that, you know, I, I don't make the same mistakes. I make new mistakes, right? So with that as a backdrop, what has changed is many things have changed, right? When you look at a company, what does uh, a startup need? A startup needs team, startup needs finance, a startup needs a problem or a product that you're going after. What I've seen change from my last experience, my startup, last one was started right after the, the 2008 burst. And there was a, the, the difference between availability of talent and availability of finance. I think that is a big change that I'm observing. Right? Back then, you had a lot of talent that you can absorb, you can get. There wasn't much competition, but the resources were less too. Things have flipped right now. There's a lot of op opportunity, there's a lot of capital, but the very less talent that you can get, especially in the Bay Area, as you know. Yeah. It's a hot market right now, big companies pay a lot of uh, compensation. So how a startup competes, that's a big thing step chain. Right. Fundamental of starting a company, building a company, as you said, those are same. You know, tactics have different, uh, strategies are st same. But this is the big dynamic shift that I've seen happening over the period of time. Let's see how this proceeds. But I would honestly love to go back to the original time when you have less resources so you can focus exactly on what is important for a startup. Um, so that's a good point. What is important for a startup? Focus <coughs> is very, very key. Uh, one of the big pain points for most startups is uh, once the ideation and the product you know, has evolved, getting the customer. So any advice on getting the first customer or the first 10 customers because you have to prove your concept? That's absolutely right. It's a, it's a chicken and egg problem. You don't have a customer till you have product. You don't have product till you have customer. And you know every time, depending on what sector you're going after. My last starter was primarily B2C, uh, a, a product that was used by consumer. And this startup is B2B. Um, there are different tactics when you say B2C company versus B2B company. When you're building a B2C company, you pretty much go out with a thesis. You go out with a hypothesis. Say that if I build this, 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 depending on my observations, I will start getting this traction. And then you start navigating your product, you start navigating your product features, there's tactics of distribution, and so on and so forth. When you're looking at the business-focused startup, it's a little different. You know, you can't really build the product that they're looking for because they're looking for a mature, professional product. So then you go after and you say, look, I can build this. And, you know, if you give me this, this, this amount of, um, and it's not, again, sure, it's, it's sure. not an you know, exact statement, but if you give this, 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 this commitment, I will give you this, this, this. Then what you do is go after and gather resources, get, get funding, build this MVP product, right? Yeah. And then you sign up that customer, even though it may not be the you know, full product, it may be one feature, but it may look, it has to look professional. So, you know, whether it's, whether you're building after we do, uh, uh, small medium businesses or enterprise product, but it has to work yeah, really yeah. well, whatever that feature you have, and again, there are different tactics you go. And initially, like, um, 
it's it's maybe unfair, but initial customers that you get in B2B are yeah. usually your contacts, right? And so when you start exploring your contacts, they give you unfair advantage. Even your product is not fully solid, they give you opportunity to build your product. Sure. And then you start building the mature product by raising funding. And the key test is how do you expand beyond your own contacts? And that's, that's where they call the product market fit. Right, right. Um, finally, then I want to come back to another pain point, and they say before the you know uh, man, exit is pretty far away, but before you actually t scale to that level, having the right team is very important, and that is also you know trial and tested method, I guess. Uh, sometimes it's hit and miss. How do you get the right team into place? That's a loaded question, Martin. <laughs> um, look, I think most of the smart people are driven by mission. So my approach is always about the mission of the company. You okay. know, if you have the, the mission that excites the team, you always get the right team. Okay. And it is very essential because initially you don't have the resources that can match to a big company. Sure. So you have to drive by a mission, number one. Number two, you have to, of course, have a network, right? You need to understand what, pe what drives people. You need to know what you know, their backgrounds are. So knowing people is important. Knowing lots of people is very important um, in terms of building the team. And uh, number three, I think, is um, building the diverse team. And it's not just a checkbox that people say you need to have a diverse team. It's very, very important. Having gone through twice, you need to have people who think differently. They come from different backgrounds, different occupations, different, you know, even different um, countries, different Oh. Gender, so it's all important. So having diversity, I think, is a very important part of the initial team. Um, you know, I think, I, like you said, mission is very important. And if you have the mission and the right leadership at the top, then obviously, in in, in lieu of big compensation, still drive right talent for the opportunity. You know, a, a little opportunity, I guess. Absolutely, because what happens is when things are great, you get great people. Yeah, you need the best team when you are struggling. You need your team to be with you and take the company out of that and thrive beyond that. And that's where the essentially the strong team driven by mission is very important. Yeah. Well, all those are very, very good pointers and I'm sure it will be very valuable. Like always, uh, Andy, it's always good to meet you and uh, you had one success, like I said, and wishing you all the best for the second one and continue to do the good work. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you for the opportunity.